So anyway, so great. So we're going to uh, go into our meditation time. We're going to teach you a very simple chant. Um, peace I am, peace in every moment, peace in every moment, peace I am. We'll move into the meditation, and then we will come out of the meditation with Angelina singing the Lord's Prayer, and then I will speak uh, Jesus' Jesus's tongue, the Aramaic of the Lord's Prayer. Peace I am, peace in every moment, peace in every moment, peace I am. Allowing it to fill every cell of our body. Knowing that with each breath in, we experience peace and joy in a deeper way. And as we breathe out, we share that peace and joy with the world. That sharing allows us to breathe in more of God's love and peace and joy. Filling up once again And as we breathe out, we have an opportunity to let go of what no longer serves us. Sharing our good news, releasing with all that no longer feels appropriate, and in alignment with who we now are. Everything is perfect exactly the way it is. And so is our desire to improve it. Allow the music now to take you on your very own sacred journey into the peace of God.
very gently now. Begin to bring your attention into the physical world, your chair, this holy sanctuary where we come to remember the truth of our being. Where we come to remember that joy is our birthright. Where we come to remind each other how lovable we are. Thank you, Great Spirit, Father, Mother, God, and so it is. Amen. I invite you to breathe these words in, these magical words given to us by our great way shower, reminding us that we were meant to experience the joy of heaven on earth. And so it is. Amen. Oh, well. <laughs> We're clapping for you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, I, I heard a, a joke this morning that I have to share with you. It's not really a joke. Um, this gentleman saw this phone in a Catholic church up in New York. And he said, what's that phone? He says, well, that's a direct line to God. 
and you, some of you may have heard this before. He says, really? He goes, yep, it's $1,000 a minute. He goes, well, I'll try it. Paid $1,000, had a minute conversation with God. It was like Neil Donald Walsh. It was awesome. So then he got to Northport. He went into another Catholic church, same phone. So that's that $1,000 a minute phone. He goes, nope, in, in Northport, it's a local call. <laughs> oh. All right. So let's see. Uh, we are, we are going to be talking about rejection. Let's say that together. Rejection. It's a special word. It's such a special word that it doesn't exist. But it seems like it exists. So our message today is, there's no such thing as rejection. It's just God pointing us in another direction. Okay? So there's really no such thing, but there are certain things that feel like it. And we're not in denial of those things, but we know the truth beyond it. Okay? We know the truth. We talked about this a little bit last night. Is the cup half empty? Is the cup half full? Yes, to both. Where are you going to put your energy? Okay? Because the half full is so much more beautiful. Okay? That doesn't mean that there's not beauty in darkness. There is beauty in darkness. But put your energy to what you want more of. What now do you always say? It's okay to go into that part, but don't... Buy property there. Okay? I remember when I went through a five-month depression a, for the first time in my life, and it wasn't because I didn't need to do it sooner. I wouldn't allow myself to do it sooner because I was too afraid that that dragon down there was going to eat me. So I didn't do it. I was like, I put on a smiley face. Everything's great. Yippee! And when I started to get into depression, I stopped booking all my church gigs. I didn't do anything except feel sorry for myself because I needed to go there. And I also felt like a hypocrite. I said, how in the world can I get on the pulpit and talk about the kingdom of heaven on earth and joy and love and peace feeling the way I feel? It's a hypocritical thing. And the message was, your message is not how perfect you are. Your message is how perfect God is. You, you're a work in progress. That doesn't mean you can't talk about how awesome the real you is. So I let myself go through there, and I went all the way. I got to tell you this. My poor wife had to deal with her husband being so sad for five months after, you know, 11 years of not experiencing that. And she did a great job. She never tried to push me out of it. She never did any spiritual malpractice. Well, you could make another choice, you know, you know right now, you know, all that kind of stuff that we do, you know, you know, well, everything's in divine order. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Let me go through my thing. Yes. Everything's in divine order. Let me get that on my own. I got down there and I saw the dragon <sighs> this big, <laughs> this big, hopelessness did not exist down there, but I kind of had to go to see it for myself, okay? So now I told myself after that, I may go through moments, I may go through uh, circumstantial situations that I need to grieve, but I will never be hopeless again because hopelessness didn't exist. Well, it did, but it was this big, okay? It was this big. I thought it was this huge dragon that was going to devour me. So that is part of the will of God. We're talking about will, if you're going to really step in the idea of trusting all these principles, they're not just lip service, okay? All is well, everything's in divine order, then you have to be in a position to know that God's will is premier. But it's not against you. It's actually for you because it's the same as your higher will. That's the twist. It's not like I got to do something bad for me so I do something good for God in order to suffer on earth so I'll have a mansion in heaven. The mansion is right here. It's inside of you, inside of me, when we trust. This last 16 months has been the most challenging opportunity for me to trust in spirit. But there has been so many wonderful things that have happened because of it, okay? So there's, I felt on some level that we had been rejected by the universe, lost all of our work. I remember this wave of sadness coming over to me every month as more churches canceled. I had nine months of work booked up from March through the end of the year. 
And then April canceled and May canceled. And I was doing okay. And then June canceled. We were going to New England for a month. Lobster people. <laughs> for you vegetarians, tofu lobster. <laughs> Fake butter. Okay, anyway, just saying that, just easy, not, not putting anybody down. Um, so, uh, by the way, is there anybody here that doesn't believe in reincarnation? You will in your next life, sir. Okay, just kidding, I'm just, that's just a joke. That's not, anyway, okay, so that one really got me, knocked me down for a while, and then August, September, October, and then everything was gone. And it required me to go deeper. Wayne Dyer, one of my heroes, he was my real first super spiritual teacher back in the 80s, I guess maybe 1980 or 81. I bought his book series, uh, which was actually on cassettes. Do you all remember what cassettes are? It was, it was a huge cassette set with about 18 cassettes. I got it from Earl Nightingale's company or whatever, and it said, how to be a no-limit person, and I loved it. But he said something really, really powerful. He said, we are God incarnate okay and he also said if you are what you do then when you don't you aren't if you are what you do then when you don't you aren't I sort of thought I was what I do now I would have never told you that no I don't I'm not but then when it went away and I got depressed again <laughs> I went oh I did believe I was what I do I'm this breadwinner, you know, uh, and I have to make sure we have enough money or I'm not a good person. So I also went into a lot of shame. Talked a little bit about that last night. Shame, I'm not doing my job. We joke about all these, these things, you know, Angelina's bread maker, I'm breadwinner, you know. <laughs> so we have all these different things that we do. And, but her life didn't change as much. And so I had to deal with that. We are not what we do. What we do is just an expression of who we are. Okay, and yes, the more you are in alignment with who you are in your work, in your relationships, the more disappointment and challenge it will be for you if they go away. But it's still not who you are. So I realized in that episode, there's no such thing as a rejection. COVID and churches did not reject me. Okay, it was God pointing me in a new direction to let go of old belief systems that I was what I do. And that Armand not being the musical minister is somehow Armand not being himself. And it's not true, okay? What about you? So for me, being home for those months was really helpful <laughs> because I'm more the introvert and we were on the road for 20 years, um, a lot on the road. 270 and I, <laughs> days a year. Right. And so I never felt like I had enough time at home. I'm being an introvert. I recharge by being home, being by myself. And so I found like every time I had so much anxiety, which I didn't really believe or want to believe that. Uh, but as I was home, I realized I had time to get things done at the house, you know, clean out a closet, clean the garage out, you know, all those things that every time I'm home in the past, it's like, oh, God, we're on the road again. I don't have time. And la, 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 la. And then we're on the road, and I have anxiety about other stuff, too. And, and what happened is because of this anxiety, I got a lump in my throat. And so I was very concerned, thinking it had to do with my vocal cords, and oh, my gosh. And so um, I went to the doctor, and he said, uh, it's nothing to do with your vocal cords. They're healthy. But uh, yeah. But you do have a thyroid problem, so I've, <laughs> I didn't go in there for that, but anyway. But the lump <laughs> had nothing to do with that. The lump was, it's called a global sensatious or something like that, and they don't really know the cause of it, but they believe that the cause could be because of stress. <laughs> so as we've been home for those 16 months, the lump in my throat is gone. Yeah, so I am so grateful for that. And now my house feels pretty in order and I feel good. And now that I know that I have anxiety and, uh, you know, when that spikes and comes up, I can be go, okay, I need some chill time or I need, you know, whatever that is. So for me, it was such a uh, awakening for me. And um, I, I, different than Armand, I found also that I'm a project person. I'm always doing a project. So when, when it's this uh, 
stay at home thing happened, I decided to do little videos of the Daily Word because I love the Daily Word so much. And so we did one, and someone said, several people said, please do this every day. We need this so much right now. And so we committed to doing it every day. And so that kept me busy, kept me on purpose, and it, uh, it opened up my creativity and my expression in, in talking. I was always more quiet. I don't know those of you that know me on stage. I was much more quiet. And now I feel alive and want to share what is here to come out. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to find out how to, um, to navigate that. Uh, if you're familiar with the Venn diagram, uh, it's often used with circles. And so let's say we have this circle here called Angelina, and we have this circle here called Armand. Now, when you cross them, you get like a little fish in the middle. It's called the vesica Pisces. So we have to find out in all of our relationships what those things are and do more of that and not try to get this side to be more like you, not to get this side, find out more. Now our vesica Pisces miraculously is huge. As a matter of fact, other than eating oysters, which she won't do, <laughs> the stuff on the other stuff is very, very small. But we found out in this work thing that we were not, mostly me, not honoring the Vesica Pisces. She has more anxiety if we're gone too much. I have more anxiety if we're not making enough money, not playing enough places. I'm not getting a chance to perform and get stimulated, okay? Squirrel! And this, <laughs> this, this job is perfect for me with my stuff because I'm constantly meeting new people, which I love. I'm constantly going to new places. I'm constantly being able to share my gifts and I stay stimulated. So now we have to find out what's too little, what's too much, which is right in here, this beautiful fish-shaped um, Vesica Pisces of Armangelina. There's Armand, there's Angelina, there's Armangelina. <laughs> kind of like Brangela. You know, but, uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, is that what it was? Brangelina. Brangelina, thank you, that's right. And then, of course, Ben Affleck was with Jennifer, so that was Benifer. Anyway, Armand. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so real quickly, I don't want to uh, go too far into this, but I did the same thing about five years ago with politics. I took the red circle and the blue circle, and I said, okay, I know there are red people that wish the blues would go away, and I know there are blue people that wish the reds would go away, but there's a nice purple fish in the middle, and we need to focus on that. And there's so much that we have in common, okay? We all love the American dream. The experience, the uh, experiment, rather, is alive and well. We just have different ways of getting it. And so we have to work this out. I noticed y'all got some interesting flags flying around this town in people's yards. I saw one last night that had some bad words on it. And it said bad words about a certain person politician and then it said bad words about all you that voted for that certain politician i don't know if you've seen it i'm not gonna tell you where it is and i saw it and it hurt my heart mm -hmm. it hurt my heart and if i had seen it for the uh, other politician that's on the other side of the field it would have hurt my heart the same way we don't need to do that but then i thought wait a second there's no such thing as rejection armand this <laughs> is a gift really yes this dark flag reminds you where the light is you, you sometimes don't know where the light is until you get in the darkness. So if you see people being horrible to each other, it's a gift. Thank you for showing me what doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Thank you for showing me how I don't want to be. Thank you, 15-month great pause, for showing us where we both need to be. It's a wonderful thing. Let me tell you something. There has been so, I hope you all like lemonade because there's been so many lemons that have happened in the last 15 months with masks and closures and money and political unrest. I've never seen the political stuff as much as it is because now you're adding masks and mandates and all that to the mix that was already pretty scary. Although, I did see Hamilton. How many people have seen Hamilton? Okay. People now are running, off, running their mouths off, okay, shooting off their mouths. In those days, they were shooting each other. We're doing a little bit better than that. I mean, you know, politicians had duels and killed each other. You know, your, your history. You know, now they're just doing Facebook posts. Uh, so it, it's, it's better. But we, we have a long way to go. By looking at the darkness, 
we can shine the light on it better. We can see the light. And that's why there's no such thing as rejection. Okay, it's just moving us. So we're making lemonade out of these lemons, ladies and gentlemen. That's what unity is all about. Yes. So I also like something that Armand does. Uh -oh. So when we're at a restaurant or something and Armand says, I'd like to order some raw oysters. And they say, well, we, we're out of raw oysters. And what do you say, Armand? Is today Monday? You're right. I don't eat raw oysters on Monday. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, you know, so instead of going, oh, boy, re you know, we'll just say rejection. It, I, I really wanted them. I didn't get them. He goes to the positive of, well, I'll get them tomorrow. Or, you know, or I didn't. It's Monday. I don't eat oysters on Monday. And really, it's just uh, a silly, uh, childish way of dealing with, like, Byron Katie. We have any Byron Katie folks? Byron Katie basically does the same thing. She just does it more maturely than I do. She says, how do you know if something is happening the way it's supposed to? If it's happening. <laughs> now, I know that sounds simple, but that is not easy. Okay? Okay? I've gone some... Raise your hand if you've gone through some pretty horrible things that felt like horrible rejection and turned out to be exactly what you needed to be the fabulous person you are today. Oh, only everyone. Hello. Okay. <laughs> that would be our first Yeah, marriage. that would be our first marriage. <laughs> when that ended for both of us, uh, mine ended a year or so before hers did, we both felt this is horrible. This is not supposed to be. This is supposed to be for life. We were both born Catholic. You get married, you stay with them. Guess what? It led us to each other. It, it set the stage for God's will for us to be together, okay? I, I got a call from my past wife. I call her my past wife because sometimes I have a past wife experience. <laughs> and what do you call yours? My husband. <laughs> So we don't see her husband much, but my past wife happens to be a good friend of Angelina's now. They love each other. The minute she sees Angelina, she goes, you're not done with him yet? That's the first thing she always said. But they're very good friends. And she called me just a few months ago, and she says, Armand, guess what? I got married today. She wanted me to know that she had found the love of her life. So uh, it's, it's just a miracle. So, so many wonderful things are available to us, but it's a shift of perception, okay? We, we, we sing stuff, uh, we have the song, Everything Will Be Okay in the End, If It's Not Okay, which we'll be singing during offertory today. Now, one of the challenges that I notice with a lot of speakers and performers and musicians is using the pulpit kind of as a marketing thing. That's always bothered me. By the way, I wrote a book <laughs> during the pause. And, uh, and I just found out that Unity of Sebring is uh, doing my book as their book study. <laughs> um, but I would like to read something from that book that goes in line with today. So this is a chapter called Faith in the System, which again is trusting God's will. Basically, the whole book is about God's will. It's, it's pretty much all the stuff that I've been speaking about for the last 25 years. And I can tell you, this book did not come from me. It came through me as folks that write and write sermons. You probably have days when you don't have anything, and then you get it all, and you go, that didn't come from me. That came through me. So this came through me. Everything will be okay as soon as you are okay with everything. Let's say that together. Everything will be okay as soon as you are okay with everything. And that's the only time everything will be okay. And that's by Michael Singer, who is the author of The Untethered Soul and The Surrender Experiment. Really, I'll tell you a quick story about Michael. So Angelina and I went to his uh, Temple of the Universe in Gainesville one time. We were at the Unity Church of Gainesville the next day, and we heard Saturday night Michael was doing a gathering. And he starts off by saying, what's going on in your week? And goes to each person. They basically say how they're using the tools, uh, his tools, The Untethered Soul, to make the best of every situation. And at the end, they bring out a box of donuts. And at that time, Angelina and I were very anti-sugar. And so uh, we're still very limited on our sugar, but we're not so uh, fundamentalist about it as we were. So he goes, uh, do y'all want some donuts? And when somebody offers me something, I never want to make them feel guilty about it. Oh, no, we don't eat that kind of food, or I don't put that in my body, which I did a lot of times <laughs> in the beginning when she would be eating French fries. You want some French fries? No, I don't put that in my body. Can you say condescending? <laughs> 
Ixnay on the on dissension K? Okay. But, but I'm better. I'm better. So I didn't want to say anything that would, you know, jeopardize their joy. And I said, no, we're on some stupid diet that says we can't have it. That felt better to me. He goes, Armand, your diet's not stupid. It's just not fun. <laughs> Is that a great way? Okay, so I'm going to finish this before we finish up the service. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, has been said to stand for feeling all right in the heart. Okay? Feeling all right in the heart. It does not mean we always understand everything. It doesn't mean we don't get confused. It just means that we trust that, as John Lennon said, John Lennon fans, John Lennon said, everything will be okay in the end. Okay? Being confused is okay. Thinking that there is something wrong with us for being confused is the problem. Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, we just want to ask you a very, very big question before we go into our final song. Is everything happening the way it's supposed to? If we can remember that every time. So this song is called There's No Such Thing as Rejection. It's God pointing us in another direction. We hope you will sing that part with us. And there's a pirate part. Na 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 oi Okay yeah There's no such thing as rejection It's God pointing us in another direction God's will It's never rejection It's God pointing us in another direction You ready Oi na 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 of wisdom and in my ear would ring. Don't think the world is against you. There's no such thing. Don't think the world is against you cause there's no such thing. Hey! There's no such thing as rejection. It's not pointing us in another direction. It's never rejection. It's not pointing us in another direction. No! I knew true love would be my quest. Though many trials and tribulations put me to the test. There were a dozen lovely maidens. Much heartache they would bring. I thought the world was against me, but there's no such thing. The world was never against me, because there's no such thing. into my middle ages becoming fully realized I trust my inner sages my quest is done I found my bride this holy grail I breathe the world was never against me there's no such thing the world Never against us, cause there's no such thing. Oh. Thank you. And now a word from our sponsor. Are you done? We are done. We or time flies when you're manic. I know. We, I saw we, a bumper sticker the other day. I got to tell you, we were at New England in 2018, 
and we were in a little town called Sandwich, <laughs> and there was a bumper sticker on the back of a car that said, I hate being bipolar. It's awesome. <laughs> I told you you'd laugh a bunch. <laughs> We're so delighted to have you here. We're so blessed. Now is the time in our service when we get to bless our ministry. And so we love to give from our good into this spiritual community. So whether you're here giving of your checks or your tithes or if you're on PayPal or Zoom or no, Breeze, at a later time, we are so blessed to have your offerings and gifts. So let's bless them together, shall we? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so.